Welcome, welcome everyone. My name is Sean, and today we're going to talk about this Coleman Hughes appearance on The View, because while Coleman won over many of the hosts, many of the ladies of The View, Sonny Hostin, as expected, decided that she was going to take this opportunity to smear Coleman, but in the most cowardly way humanly possible. Talking about all the criticisms that some people have of Coleman Hughes, that many people are saying about Coleman Hughes, even though in reality and actuality, those criticisms are coming directly from Sonny Hassan, but I just want you to see a classic way of being able to deal with these people that showed poise and the discipline that one would expect from the young Mr. Coleman Hughes. But before we get into that, I want to say thank you to everybody who signed up over on actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you give me the money. Okay. And remind you that on Saturday, April 27th, I will be at Austin, Texas for Minds Fest. Link to tickets, top of the description, promo code AJW for 20% off. So right off the top, I just want to say to everybody out there in the audience, I actually really like Coleman Hughes. I was fortunate enough to have met him in a Minds event in New York City. But more importantly, my brother actually met him when Coleman Hughes actually stumbled into his place of business. And when I asked Hughes about my brother to see if he remembered him, not only did he remember him, but he actually had something thoughtful and insightful to say about their interaction. Very sweet young man, 28 years old, already a successful author, already has a team of people independently managing his stuff, working out where he's doing appearances and all that. And it's great to see a young guy like this be so successful, have such a broad audience, and again, be a successful author. Really kind of embarrassing that I'm about five years older than Coleman Hughes, and yet he He's killing it in all these possible ways. So he wrote a new book. He decided that in this new book promotion, he was going to go places like The View. And he started out engaging with Whoopi Goldberg in what I thought was actually a really thoughtful exchange where you see how actually engaging with the person that you're dealing with can help bridge the gap between different generations. And I actually really like this part. And I know we're going to focus a lot on the Sonny Hostin thing, but I want to play that for you so you can understand the setup for this conversation and how he was able to win over most of the ladies of The View. The first question that I should ask you to, to, to do is explain to folks what you mean by this. Arguments for a colorblind America. What do you mean when you say that? So a lot of people equate colorblindness to I don't see race or mm -hmm. to pretending not to see race. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big mistake. We all see race, mm -hmm. right? And we're all capable of being racially biased, so we should all be self-aware to that possibility. My argument is not for that. My argument is that we should try our very best to treat people without regard to race, both in our personal lives and our public policy. Of course. And the reason I wrote this book, thank you. So right off the bat, Coleman Hughes hits hard against what I think is the straw man of the argument for a colorblind society, which is saying, oh, well, you don't see color. <laughs> yeah, right, buddy. Obviously, you see color by acknowledging the fact that, yes, people happen to see color. That happens to be a fact. However, how we structure our society should be based not on the color that we see, but on our desire to not have that be a determining factor in what we're doing and how we judge people and how we interact with people. I think Coleman Hughes is 100% right on this. I think it's common sense. And I don't think this makes him a secret evil conservative or secret evil white racist who happens to be half black and half Puerto Rican, despite what the ladies of The View, and by ladies of The View, I mean really just Sonny Hostin, are going to allege a little bit later. I think this is a sensible policy. And by the way, he's essentially making the argument throughout this whole segment for class-based liberalism or class-based liberal social policy. So the idea that this is a conservative position, to me, absolutely absurd. The reason I wrote this book is because in the past 10 years, it has been, uh, become very popular to, in the name of anti-racism, mm -hmm. teach a kind of philosophy to our children in, in general that says your race is everything. Right. And I think that is the wrong way to fight racism. And that's why I wrote this book at this time. So he gives his premise. He basically says, look, the reason I'm writing this book is over the last decade to what he has seen. We have decided to overemphasize race in our society or focus too much on race. And he wants to move away from that direction, acknowledge that it's there, but make policy that is best for overall society. And this causes Whoopi to engage with him on this specific point. And this is probably my favorite part of the whole exchange. There is a reason for that. You you know, when I went to school, 
getting any information about anyone's race was not taught <coughs> in history. There was no black history. None of those things were taught. And here in America, 100 years ago, when I was a young woman, <laughs> that's how people saw you. That's how they judged you. So I think, I don't want to say it's the, your youth, but I think you have a, point, but I think you have to also take into consideration what people have lived through in order to understand why there has been such a, a, a pointing of very specific racial things. Like women couldn't go to get into colleges. If you are a black person, there are a lot of colleges wouldn't accept you. Trying to equal the playing field. I think that's what a lot of folks were, have been trying to do. So right here, Whoopi Goldberg makes the case that honestly, a lot of reasonable people on the left tend to make, which is listen, back in the day when she was growing up, Whoopi Goldberg is 68 years old. For those of you who are unaware, 40 years older than Coleman Hughes. The fact of the matter is people were judged in the laws based on race. This was an issue. It was omnipresent and there wasn't all this education and whatnot about not judging people based on the color of their skin. Obviously, civil rights movement happened and all that, but she lived in the immediate aftermath of the civil rights movement. That's the era that she grew up in. And while many of people who are not as clever, not as smart, not as interested in actually engaging with the conversation as Coleman Hughes would dismiss this or ignore it or tell some kind of joke, the way that Coleman Hughes engages with this is exactly why people from across the political spectrum, I believe, actually like this young man, actually support this young man. I'm sure, sorry, I didn't sure. mean to cut you off. I think that's your experience, and that's valid. You know, as a counterpoint, mm -hmm. when I was in fifth grade, we all watched Roots mm -hmm. together yeah. in, in public school. Yeah. So these are different experiences. I, yes. I think it's also different generations. Mm -hmm. It's different parts of the country, mm -hmm. right? We have very different cultures all living together in one yes. country. So I'm not going to deny that. So I like this on multiple levels. So Coleman Hughes acknowledges Whoopi Goldberg's lived experience. He does not dismiss it. He understands that she grew up in a different context in a different time period in the United States of America. And then he explains to her that his experience was quite different. In fact, they actually watched Roots when he was growing up in the school, which I find to be hilarious because Whoopi Goldberg, like almost everybody who is black in Hollywood, was in Roots, including O.J. Simpson. But I think I view this notion of a colorblind society similar to the idea of a peaceful society, which is to say it's an ideal. It's a North Star. Mm -hmm. And the point is not that we're ever going to get there. We're not going to touch it. But we have to know when we're going forward and when we're going backwards. And we're going backwards when we're doing woke kindergarten in San Francisco. So my overall argument is that class socioeconomics is a better proxy for disadvantage we all want to help the disadvantage and the question is how do we identify them right the default right now in a, in, in a lot of areas of policy is to use you know black and hispanic identity as a proxy for disadvantage and my argument is that you actually get a better picture of who needs help by looking at socioeconomics and, and income now basically the premise that coleman hughes puts forward right here is the fact that instead of focusing on race as a proxy for helping the disadvantaged, we should focus on socioeconomic status instead of looking at whether or not you're black or hispanic we should actually look at your family wealth to determine whether or not you need help and he believes that this will disproportionately aid blacks and hispanics while at the same time have greater buy-in from the overall population and help poor white people who although are not disproportionately poor do represent the majority of people in poverty my argument is that you actually get a better picture of who needs help by looking Looking at socioeconomics and, and income that that picks out people in a more accurate way but, so. now this makes a lot of sense and not mentioned in this video is that oftentimes the people who take advantage of certain affirmative action programs happen to be upper class black people upper class hispanic people who will get in or get easier admission to certain places based on their race even though their income level supersedes other applicants, so you're essentially helping the wealthy elite in those categories rather than the people that you actually want to help. I know a lot of people have pointed out that a lot of black immigrants from Africa take advantage of certain programs like this, and they don't want that to be the case, especially if you consider that this is supposed to be some kind of repayment for slavery or something like that. It really doesn't make all that much sense, so I think even though he didn't say that part, that should also be mentioned in this particular conversation conversation but more importantly for a lot of people this is just an easier buy-in for the general population because the idea that you would tell a white person in theory 
you're poor, but you're white, therefore no help for you, but you, black person, whether you're poor, middle class, or upper middle class, will help you based on your race, does not sit well for people in the United States of America. And Coleman Hughes' idea is that the goal should be helping poverty, not helping a specific racial group, and by consequence of that policy, you will disproportionately help black and Hispanic people as they are disproportionately in poverty. You guys understand his argument? You understand that it makes pretty much solid sense especially if you're a liberal person maybe not a woke progressive who puts identity above everything get it got it good when you say that uh socioeconomics picks out people in a better way than mm -hmm. race mm -hmm. when you do look at the socioeconomics you see the huge disparity between white households and black households you see the huge disparity between white households and hispanic households so your argument and i've read your book twice because i wanted to give it a chance mm -hmm. um your argument that race has no place in that equation is really fundamentally flawed in my no, opinion. I, well so Sunny jumps in, she's very upset, and she seems to have an agenda in going after the young Mr. Coleman Hughes, but if you actually listen to what she said, despite the seal clapping from the audience of The View, it added nothing to the conversation. She said, look, you're saying that race should not be considered a factor, but when you look at the socioeconomics, what you find out is that blacks and Hispanics are disproportionately in poverty, which is not something that Coleman Hughes doesn't acknowledge. But Sonny fails to see how this is actually a counter-argument. Now, I wish Coleman would have brought up the fact that certain policies that are based on race help wealthy people. And by the way, Sonny is a wealthy, half-black, half-Hispanic woman. I believe it was pointed out by Anna Kasparian that she's actually wearing a Gucci shirt and a Gucci belt in there. So you have a wealthy lawyer on television, multi-millionaire, black and Hispanic woman, saying that you shouldn't help just people in poverty. You should help people regardless of their wealth based on the fact that they're black and Hispanic because, you know, disproportionately those people happen to be poor. And I wish he would have brought this point up, but the way he addresses it in a calm, succinct manner, again, just underscores the value of somebody like Coleman Hughes in public discourse, who's not just going to regurgitate one side specific talking points and is able to deal with the regular ordinary smears that you get from far leftists like Sonny Hostin in a way that, again, won over the overwhelming majority of the people on The View, including Whoopi Goldberg. Two separate questions. One is whether each racial group is socioeconomically the same. That, I agree with you. They're not. This, this, yeah, they're not. And the, the stats show is, that. But the, yeah, of course. I agree with that fully. Do you catch the antagonism right there? So he says there's two separate questions there. And before he even finishes question number one, she's like, yeah, they're not. And the stats show that. What, what do you have to say about that? Well, he's actually answering the question, Sonny. The question that you asked, the statement that you put forward, he is in the process of dismantling it. So calm down, slow down a little bit. Take a pause, take a break for station identification, have a sip of water, adjust your Gucci belt, and listen up, because you're about to be taken to school. The question is, how do you how do you address that in the way that actually targets poverty the best? Great. And what Martin Luther King wrote in his book, Why We Can't Wait, mm -hmm. is he called it, we need a bill of rights for the disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. And he said, yes, we should address racial inequality. Yes, right. we should address the legacy of slavery. But the way to do that is on the basis of class. And that will disproportionately target blacks and Hispanics because they're disproportionately poor, but it will be doing so in a way that also helps the white poor, in a way that addresses poverty as the thing to be. So right now, at this point in time, they're going to go into a Martin Luther King, I read the book kind of quote off, which is going to be interesting because Sonny Hostin is going to claim some extra authority on the subject matter in a little bit, which we will get to. But to Coleman Hughes's point, this is the famous book that is often misquoted by Andrew Yang and by a lot of people to say that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was in favor of universal basic income, but in reality, in actuality, from when you actually crunch the numbers, it appears that he is in favor of a guaranteed minimum income, which is a slightly different thing, but based on the cost that he proposes and the level of distribution that he's suggesting, it seems like this was specifically to target the poor, and it seems like Coleman Hughes has a better read of this situation than either Andrew Andrew Yang or Sonny Hostin, but don't worry about it because Sonny Hostin has a bit of a trump card. She has something to drop on the young Mr. Hughes, and we'll see if he's able to handle this level of name dropping right directly to his face. That part is true, but as you are a student of Dr. King, I'm not only a student of Dr. King, I know his daughter, Bernice, right? Mm. Yeah, that's right. She's saying, listen, I get it, you're a student of Dr. King, but guess what? I know his daughter, Bernice. I'm friends with her. That makes me right. 
This reminds me of when Fox News drags out, I don't know if it's the niece or whatever, but somebody using the name King, and she's a relative that is kind of separated off from the rest of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s family, and they say, well, this one's a conservative, therefore, therefore, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is in favor of all conservative policies. Yeah, I don't care about who your kids are. I'm really not that interested in that. In fact, I work in an industry where half the people I run into are somebody's kid, and that's really just not something that's going to be an interesting conversation get to your point actually make it stop trying to impress me Sonny Hostin because believe me I've seen you assess the truthfulness or the likely truthfulness on certain inmates and I know you you ain't that bright in that regard so I don't give a damn who you know or who you talk to so I, I'm going to get to my question go ahead go right ahead. um I think the premise is fundamentally flawed. You, you claim that colorblindness was the goal of the civil rights movement mm -hmm. based upon Dr. King's I have a dream speech, you know, content of character versus the um, color of skin. <laughs> Bernice, Dr. King's daughter, points out that four years after giving that speech, actually, um, Dr. King also said this. A society that has done something special against the Negro for hundreds of years must now do something special for Negroes. He also said in 1968, it was about less than a week before he was assassinated. This country never stops to realize that they owe a people kept in slavery for 244 years. So you can see that Sonny Hostin is prepared to launch this attack against Coleman Hughes. And to be fair, I don't give a damn what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said. This fight over this doesn't really matter because you can be a very popular and prominent historical figure and also be incorrect about this issue or that issue. What I actually care about is the substance of this issue. But even based on this setup that, oh, you're just using the I have a dream speech, when in reality, in actuality, here's what he said years later. But it turns out Sonny Hostin is quoting from the same book that Coleman Hughes is quoting from. And Coleman Hughes basically has this thing memorized. I, I don't know what's going on. The man is a computer because his rebuttal is on point and timely. So rather than class, he did write about that earlier on. Right before his death, he made the argument for racial equality and racial reparations. So I just want to say really quickly, if we're talking about reparations, let us not forget that Sonny Hostin discovered that her family on the Puerto Rican side, which for some reason she didn't realize was rooted in Spain, were actually prolific slave traders. In fact, they were so prolific in their slave trade that they fled Spain when slavery was outlawed there, ended up in Curacao because you could still have slaves, you could still hold people in bondage, and then they fled to Puerto Rico when slavery was abolished in Curacao. So this is a woman who owes the reparations if anybody does. Let's be 100% clear about that. Yet she's demanding reparations because she thinks that she'll still get a check out of it because she wants to play the perpetual victim when it turns out she comes from an intergenerational for doing collective guilt based on your bloodline group of slavers facts are facts sonny pay what you owe and so your argument for colorblindness i think is something that the right has co-opted and so many in the black community if i'm being honest with you because i want to be believe that you are being used as a pawn by the right and that you're a charlatan of sorts. He's, he's not a Republican. Well, so how do you, who, who, he's who never voted well, you, 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 You've said that you're a conservative. No, you, you, no. No, you did. You actually said that uh, <coughs> in the podcast that you did two weeks ago. I said I was a conservative. He's not, yes, he's not, yes, you did. So, but my question, to you, my question to you is, how do you respond okay. to those critics? Okay, let's let give it a little okay, so, answer. Yes, so immediately we pivot from the quote to, guess what, you're an evil conservative, and this idea of colorblindness has been co-opted by the right wing, and honestly, you're a pawn and a charlatan, and nobody should take anything you say seriously. And many people are saying this, i.e. Sonny Hostin is saying this, Sonny Hostin believes this, Sonny Hostin thinks that if you go against the narrative, you are in fact a race traitor, but she's going to pin this on nebulous people and then say that Coleman Hughes said that he was a conservative, which is interesting because this guy is a very liberal guy in fact one of the more comparable people i would say coleman hughes is linked to although i would not say he's as trump deranged or shares all the same positions is a sam harris type that's that's who i think of a lot when i hear coleman hughes his manner of speak and whatnot and i know a lot of people that like coleman hughes but don't like sam harris but the thing is that that's that's like that kind of frame that liberal but you know not into the political correctness 
kind of old school liberal, but not the classical liberal that means libertarian kind of thing. It's hard to find a label. He calls himself an independent, and I actually think it's well suited for him. But yeah, the, the, he's not a conservative. I, I, I think it's very important. The quote that you just pointed out about doing something special for the Negro. That's yes. from the book, Why We Can't Wait, that, that I just mentioned. Yes. A couple paragraphs later, he lays out exactly what that something special was, yes. and it was the Bill of Rights for the Disadvantaged, a broad class-based po policy. But he also says okay. you must include race. <clears throat> no, he didn't. He says it's yes, a- Yes, he does. Okay, well, everyone can go, everyone should go read the book, Why We Can't Wait. Let's not get sidetracked by that. Yeah. So Coleman, first and foremost, again, this is why many people like him, addresses the substantive point that was brought up, which happens to be a couple paragraphs after the quote that she is a Attributing to Dr. Martin Luther King in the very same book, he proposes the Bill of Rights for the Disadvantaged, which is the broad economic policy that Coleman Hughes is advocating for that is not necessarily based on race. Now, Sonny has run out of quotes on her cue card, didn't realize that he was going to know the exact section of the book that she was quoting from so she's like no he said race he said you got to do something about race no you're wrong coleman hughes but now he's going to move on to address the personal attack on him um i'm i don't think i've been co-opted by anyone i've only voted twice both for democrats mm -hmm. although i'm an independent i would vote for a republican mm -hmm. probably a non-trump republican if they were compelling mm -hmm. um i don't think there's any evidence i've been co-opted by anyone and i think that that's that's a, an ad hominem tactic people use to not address really the important conversations we're having here. And I, I think it's better and it would be better for everyone if we stuck to the topics rather than but make it about so, me. But with it's no, not about no you, but I, I, just, I want to give you the opportunity to respond yeah, to the, I, I appreciate your, it. the criticism. I appreciate it. There's no evidence that I've been co-opted by anyone. I have an independent podcast. Mm -hmm. I work for CNN as an analyst. Mm -hmm. I write for the free press. I'm independent in all of these endeavors and no one is paying me to say what I'm saying. I'm saying it because I feel. So again, Coleman Hughes right here handles it like a champ. He's like, listen, that's an ad hominem attack. There's no evidence that I've been co-opted by anyone. He runs an independent podcast. He's not being paid by these right wing organizations. And to be fair, if you look at Coleman Hughes and you look at his team, he's very specific about who he works with, what events that he does and all that, because he doesn't want to be co-opted by any particular organization because he's somebody who is speaking to what he actually believes. And he just happens to not line up with the standard Democratic Party narrative where you put race above of everything and you use that as a club to bludgeon your political opponents and what Sonny Hawson is doing is quite nasty and she's saying listen it's not me as soon as he starts stepping up to her and she realizes that maybe this isn't the best line of attack on him she's like oh I'm just giving you a chance to respond to your critics I, I you know I had prepared notes specifically to contradict you here but it's just you know me giving a chance for you to respond to your critics after she loses the exchange now the segment closes with Coleman Hughes explaining his position on why race relations have gotten worse in the United States of America essentially he makes the point that we had technology smartphone technology videos started being uploaded to the internet and that gave people a misguided perception of how race is because we all of a sudden saw instances of racial incidents go viral some of them weren't even legitimate racial instances that we covered on the channel but overall I think the heart of the segment is that back and forth with Sonny Hawson which by the way is set up by a rather nice exchange and meeting of the minds with Whoopi Goldberg. But I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. As usual, if you like the video, show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on the social media, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about Sonny Hostin versus Coleman Hughes on The View. Till next time.